Hey guys, I want to make a quick video showing you some recent modifications I've made to my no weld grinder sander. Uh, if any of you guys haven't seen this before, uh, this is the grinder I used to make knives. Uh, again, it's called the no weld grinder sander or the NWGS. And uh, I built this myself, though it was designed by another knife maker named Tracy Mickley. Uh, you can find plans for this at usaknifemaker.com which is the uh, knife supply store owned by the man who designed this. And uh, it's a great supply store. Uh, the plans are really good, really well written, and uh, very easy to follow. And uh, what you get is uh, by far one of the best machines you can get for that kind of money. Uh, great function, great versatility, and uh, definitely more than precise enough to make some really nice blades. Uh, now, it's probably not going to rival uh, KMG, or uh, maybe a uh, Wilton square wheel or any of those other high dollar grinders uh, that come out in excess of two or three thousand uh, dollars but for under a thousand dollars which I think is just about all that I would have in this one uh, if even that uh, you really get quite a versatile grinder uh, that has more than enough room for growing adjusting and uh, for serving your needs as a knife maker uh, now that being said, uh, no design is perfect, and because of that, there's always room for improvements. And uh, over the last couple years or so that I've owned this grinder and been using it, uh, I have seen some room for uh, modifications and for improvements uh, based on how I built mine. And uh, tonight I went ahead and implemented some things I've been thinking about doing for a while, and uh, I think it's really going to make a world of difference uh, as far as the precision and repeatability that I get from this machine. And uh, I'm going to show you a quick example on this tool rest socket here. Uh, one of the problems I've been having uh, because of the design of this grinder, which uses a 2-inch uh, square tubing socket with an inch and a half square tubing arm, and uh, because of the wall thicknesses on this and the dimensions of this mild steel, uh, you're not going to get a precision fit like, say, you would the tool arm socket of a KMG or another uh, manufactured grinder. Uh, as you can see, uh, even right in front of us here, uh, we have quite a bit of space, maybe almost an eighth inch on either side of this tool arm, uh, which allows uh, quite a bit of play to be introduced in this. Uh, now, if you really crank down on this and tighten it up, it does tend to get better eventually. Uh, but you still, if you're really leaning into things, are going to get a little bit of wobble, a little bit of play. And depending on how you insert your arm and tighten it up, uh, you're really not going to get the exact same angles every time. And uh, one of the things uh, that really led to me having issues here is that sometimes uh, I would kind of angle my arm just a little bit this way, maybe a little bit more that way. And it'd be very hard for me to match up my tool table exactly parallel with my flat platen or my contact wheel and uh, other things like that. Uh, now, of course, you're also going to have that up here. And since the adjustment arm is on the right side, uh, instead of moving left and right and getting play that way, I would have up and down play. So uh, if I were really to bear into this or maybe uh, tighten the belt up too much, uh, it would actually pull the platen up just a little bit and change that angle ever so slightly. Uh, again, either on the flat platen or the contact wheel. And uh, in the grand scheme of things, uh, that really leads to poor precision, poor repeatability. And uh, really introduces a number of problems there uh, that I found uh, here recently can be easily remedied. And uh, I was kind of looking at the design of this, looking at the play, and uh, just figured out a real quick and easy fix uh, for tightening up these uh, wobbly arms, if you will. And uh, that was simply to drill and tap an additional hole on the adjacent side to where my adjustment knobs were, or my tightening knobs. And uh, introduce two points of contact to either my tool rest socket or my tool arm socket. And uh, as you'll be able to see, uh, with that screw pushing into this side here, that pushes it all the way against and even with this opposite side, while this one pushes it against and even with the bottom side. And uh, same with this one here. 
Uh, I am no longer able to pull this arm up no matter how hard I were to pull on the belt or bear into the grinder. Uh, we're not going to have any up and down play and with this knob back here pushing it into the opposite end uh, we're not going to have any side to side play either. So uh, it's really done quite a bit to stiffen this machine up and uh, I even went ahead and did it on my uh, tool rest adjustments here uh, which again was another source of uh, play just with how this happened to uh, insert in there. It could be cocked that way a little bit, it could be cocked this way and uh, that would really wreak havoc with the angles on this table and getting it exactly 90 degrees to my platen. Uh, so now that I have the additional adjustment or the set screw there uh, as well as one here I'm really able to get the exact repeated angles to my tool sockets, my tool arms, what have you, every time that I insert something into the sockets. And uh, it was a real simple fix, very easy to do. It just took me a few minutes uh, to drill and tap these holes out and to insert some small bolts uh, with some lock nuts on there. Uh, I went ahead and just put a lock nut on there to keep this from vibrating loose. The sander does vibrate a little bit, and I'm sure that eventually these will loosen up. Uh, so this will keep that exactly where I need it. Uh, which is just inside the socket enough to be able to fit this in and out. Uh, same with this one, this one, and this one. So, uh, like I said, real easy fix, real simple. Uh, maybe something that uh, should have been in the plans in the beginning, uh, but it just wasn't. So, uh, if you guys have a no well grinder sander or you built one, you might want to do that. Uh, make that little modification there. Uh, you can even use thumb screws or additional knobs, uh, but this seems to work just fine and be just as easy. Uh, if I need to loosen this up, adjust it, just need a quick socket wrench or a crescent wrench there, we'll be good to go. So uh, I think that's really going to do uh, quite a bit in increasing my precision while using this machine, as well as the repeatability, and uh, it may even allow me to use some jigs that I'm working on. Uh, as getting repeatability with those was kind of an issue as well based on the varying angles of my uh, tool arm there. So uh, just a quick video for you guys. I uh, hope that helps some of you and thanks for watching.